Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George and if this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Come on, join us. Let's get to 7,000. We're very close. It'd be fabulous if you did. Also, uh, I had to, I, I meant to shout this out earlier in the previous uh, recap and I waited till the very, very end, but just wanna say a big, big thank you to everyone who's ever clicked on a Nixverse video. We reached the 1 million views milestone last week. I am humbled by it and truly uh, feel blessed to have everyone tuning in. And this back and forth that we have is fantastic. I love it. So please drop your comments and hit the thumbs up button for me. Truly appreciate that. But subscribe and share this video. Share it with friends. Share it with anyone that you might think might enjoy it or just share it in general. Well, tonight, tonight was a tough loss, guys. It was a tough loss because we had this. We had it. In fact, this is how close it was. At one point, at one point, we were up by 17 points. With five minutes left in the third, now there's still a lot of time. It's the NBA, 17 minutes left, but we had been playing our best, uh, one of our, this was one of our best defensive games that we had seen all season. That first quarter was outstanding. The Bucks looked lost. They looked confused and frustrated. They almost looked disheartened. And then the second quarter began and the Knicks even, they punished them even more. And things were just clicking along. It was fantastic, but something happened. That's uh, one of the things that happened was Emmanuel quickly left the, the, the game in the third quarter with about three minutes left. Now you can see the team was still, it kind of had plateaued. So I thought, I think, you know, Thibs thought, okay, I'll bring someone else in, uh, you know, give him a break. But once the Milwaukee Bucks got a taste of what was working, they just never looked back. And what was working was the three-point shot. That's right. I'm going to show you one play. This is the only highlight I'm going to show you for the entire uh, recap. Here it is. As you can see here, the ball comes down to Giannis. For some reason, Fournier decides to go and leave his the easiest three-point shot in the NBA, the corner three. He leaves Connaughton open, one of the best three-point shooters around. In, in like in a game where we're, we're just up by two, we had already given up 15 points of our lead, and this was the remainder of it, right there. Now, why does Giannis make this move? Because he already knows that Fournier likes to cheat and come around and steal the ball on the blind side of the dribbler. So what does Giannis do? The second he saw Fournier make a step or two, he looks for Fournier's guy. Wide open. Wide open right there. Ah, uh, so frustrating. Let's see if it'll make the play. It'll play again. Here we go. Now it'll play it again. For some reason, it paused there. Here it is. Look at that. Look at that. Fournier could make that shot with his eyes closed. So the fact that he could he let Connaughton have that open line. And he's just standing straight up, no knees bent. His whole form is off. What is going on? Dude, I know you make 17 million, 18 million a year, but you've been put on the bench for a reason. And that's the reason right there, bro. I want you to succeed. You succeed, we succeed. But when you play do plays like this, you fail, we fail. Wake up. Wake up. There, at, at crunch time, at this time of the game, trying to also go from going from one side of the restricted area to the other side to try to steal the ball from a Giannis, or you thought you were going to double or whatever, it's ridiculous. And also, strategy-wise, I'd rather give up that two-point shot to Giannis any day over giving this wide-open look that you ended up giving to Connaughton. That's right. And that's why the score ended up the way it is. That's one of the reasons why. Now, Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday hit some big, big buckets in that fourth quarter. And let's get to uh, Ian Begley here. Let's see, we lost 111-107. Sorry if I didn't announce that before, but it says it down below. Uh, here's Ian. Drew Holiday had 10 points in the final two minutes and 23 seconds to lift Milwaukee to win at New York Knicks tonight. He missed nine of his first 11 shots, but hit his final three to help end New York Knicks game four game win streak. Jalen Brunson, 44 points on 50% shooting, 44 points, a career high. 
And Emmanuel quickly, 23 points, a 9 of 14, carried New York on an off night for Randall. 9 of 29. Randall started off so cold, he was only 1 of 12. 1 of 12. That's how he started off. And yet, we were still ahead in this game because of the defense. The defense had completely discombobulated the Bucks in the beginning, in the first quarter and a half. They look lost. They look frustrated. They look like they had no answers at all for this deep, the Knicks defense. But once again, in my opinion, the minutes caught up to the Knicks. And let me show you. Oh, well, before I get to that, here. This is this is a great, great tweet. It's a great video. The post game with Jalen. I actually watched this piece. I didn't get to watch enough for the post game videos yet. Uh, but he says here, quote, for me, a couple plays in the fourth quarter that were just terrible. Those are four possessions I wish I could have had back. I got to treat possessions like they mean the world to me. I think I get that. I get that. I get that. I think you got to open that up a little more. Got to treat possessions like they mean the world to all of us. Because those are the possessions that matter the most. If you're in the game, if you have a chance to win it, those fourth quarter possessions are crucial. They are the difference between a W and an L. Those are the facts. Now we've seen all these tremendous tweets about, oh, his, his clutchness, his effectiveness and everything. But like I said before, this game is the best example tonight. It's a perfect example of why the three point shot has changed the game. I'm gonna show you something right now. Look at this. Well, here's this play. This was another atrocious play. Another wide open corner shot. Wide open corner three point shot. The question I have is, why aren't we getting these shots? Why? Why aren't we getting wide open looks like this? We have quickly out on the court. We have Grimes out on the court. Fuck, we got Jalen Brunson on the court. Why can't we get wide open three point looks like the Bucks did? Why? I'll tell you why. Because Tom Thibodeau runs a, a, a boring ISO offense. He puts the hands in Brunson, uh, the ball in Brunson's hands, and he says, get me a bucket. Well, that's what he's going to do. But guess what? When you're working one on one and you're six foot one, the bucket you're going to get is like one of these little mid rangers, or you're going to get to the hoop or whatever. And you hope to get fouled. And he did great by that. But the problem is, when you're trading buckets, threes for twos, it's just a matter of attrition. Eventually, you're going to lose if there's enough time still on the clock. This was the last time that we were tied in the game. Here it is. Mitch cheated over to stop Drew. I don't know why he did that. We didn't need that. We had uh, uh, Randall and Grimes right there. Why did Mitch need to do this? Beyond me. Wide open look. Lopez hit this shot. Knicks never were able to uh, tie it again or get the lead once again after this point. Yeah. Well, wait, before we actually, I was going to go back to this. Hold on. Here it is. Here's the fourth quarter. The last three minutes and 50 seconds of this game, the Milwaukee Bucks scored 19 points. They went four for four from the free throw line, hit three of five three point shots. So they put up five three point attempts, nine total shots. Hit six of nine, then so that means they hit three of four inside the arc. They hit three of five outside the arc and hit all of their, they only missed two. The ball went up in the air in the last four minutes for Milwaukee. Only twice did they not connect. Now, look at the rebounds. Two rebounds, three dimes. All right. They did commit two personal fouls. Drew Holiday finishes with 10 points. This is the 10 points that um, uh, Ian Beckley was talking about. But. They had three other guys scoring buckets in this period. Giannis scored two. Uh, Brooke Lopez scored his, a three and a two. The three is the one I just showed you the still of it. So that's five points for him. And then Grayson Allen hit a two point, a big drive, big drive. And uh, Mitch wasn't able to block it in, in time. So they scored 19 points. During that exact same stretch, New York Knicks scored 13 points. 13 points. Now Brunson scored 12 of them. Only one other player scored a point during the stretch. Randall, one. Now, if Brunson was launching three-point shots like a Steph Curry, we would have won this game. 
but that's not Brunson's style. That's not his game. When the coach tells him, get me a bucket, he's it's not, he's not going to be looking for the three. He's going to be trying to get a two-pointer. Well, here it is. Look at it. We actually shot better. We shot better than them during this stretch. They shot 66.7%. We shot 83.3%. But we only we put up three less buckets and no three-point shots. It's math. It's strategy. It's end game execution. You can't win in the NBA if you don't shoot the three at the end of a game. If, especially if you don't shoot it throughout the game. But if you don't shoot it at the end of the game, you're not going to win. Now, why? Why on a night when we have Emmanuel quickly cooking, cooking, does he not get an open look from the corner? That It just drives me insane. Why? This is the shit I'm talking about. I don't care. I don't care that Jalen Brunson is super clutch. I don't care. We're talking about winning a game. This is about math. There it is. How many assists? Two assists from Mitch. Mitch led the assists in the last four minutes of this game for the Knicks. No rebounds. No steals. No blocks. There it is, right there. I can stop this. Uh, I can stop this recap right there. <laughs> All right, move forward. Here we go. Team stats. Field goal percentage. Milwaukee ended about shooting us, forty-three point eight percent to thirty-eight percent. Three-point shot, thirty-eight point eight percent for them. We hit only twenty-six point eight percent, and that was because of Randall. And I'll show you. Randall missed tons of shots. Uh, total turnovers. Uh, they committed fourteen. We committed seven, which is helped us uh, build the lead. Because, I mean, we did great protecting the ball tonight. Rebounds were even, which I'll take any day against a team like the Bucks. Here we go. Here's the uh, the big stats here. Uh, Randall did finish with 25 points. Kudos to him, but shot 1 of 12 from the three-point line. Now, I get that. Everyone will say, hey, George, if Randall hits three more three-point shots, which is just 33%, you know, we win this game. I get that. But we were right there. The game was there for us. If we execute properly in the fourth quarter, like Brunson said himself, we win this game. So frustrating. And look at Brunson's stat line. You, we can't even enjoy this beautiful thing. 44 points, 15 of 30, 4 of 10 from the three-point line, 7 rebounds for Brunson. Four, only 4 dimes, though. The team overall only got 16 assists total only 16 now as a team we only shot 38 percent so there weren't many assists to be had but still there was a moment there was a moment in that fourth quarter and i know what he's talking about brunson he mitch came over and set a, a high pick and roll for him set a nice screen and he rolled and the two guys stuck with brunson for a half second mitch was wide open but because Jalen is already deciding that he's going to try and drive, dribbling, driving, he didn't just dunk the ball to Mitch, would have been an easy two. Instead, he tried to drive, couldn't drive, ended up getting it to Randall, and Randall was not able to do anything with it. So it was a lost possession. A lot. I don't even think we even got a shot up in that possession. That's the stuff I'm talking about. When the coach tells you, get us a bucket, it doesn't mean you have to get us the bucket. It means the team has to get the bucket. You have four guys on the floor with you, brother. Use them. Mitch is one of the best pick and roll, lob, dunk people in the entire NBA. Probably one of the best I've ever seen, that I've ever seen in the NBA. Just feed him properly and he will let you feast with a win. Nothing, nothing at the end. Mitch only got, he got four looks. One of four tonight, eight rebounds, uh, 37 minutes, but he had three assists for Mitch. That's crazy to think. Uh, quickly had no assists tonight, somehow shockingly. But look what he look what he did offensively. Uh, nine of 14, he played 43 minutes. Now here's the other thing, the minutes. Remember when we were talking about the minutes? Look, we had three guys, four guys, four guys all played 37 minutes or more. Four guys all played 37 minutes or more. Get ready. Milwaukee had none. 
None. Nobody played 37 minutes or more. We had four. That matters in the fourth quarter. And guess where we lost this game? We started losing in, in midway through the third, which is where fatigue starts setting in. By the fourth quarter, they were gassed. They were, they were like... There were, upper, there were moments there where the ball was just bouncing around. Lopez was tipping it out of Randall's hand. And we were just tired. We were just like, we were gassed. We couldn't beat them to the loose balls. They got the loose ball. I think on three separate occasions, Milwaukee beat the Knicks to a loose ball that easily could we could have had. And, and, and it would have made the difference in winning or losing the game. The, the game was even a lot, was a lot tighter than the final score. This was a nail-biter game. It, it wasn't even a four-point lead. At the end, actually, Brunson did make uh, at the at the end. He made, made a little two point layup to give himself forty four points. Uh, it didn't even matter at that point. The game was over by then. But those six point, those three point shots uh, were just killer, killer for us. Look at Joe Ingles, five of eleven. Uh, uh, Beauchamp, he 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 gave him some nice minutes to Milwaukee. Uh, two for four, eleven minutes, uh, eight points. Uh, the Bucks, nineteen of forty nine. They put up forty nine three point attempts. And we only put up 41. They put up 49? 41. Well, we put up 41. That was actually 41 is a good amount. We just didn't hit them. But the two guys that were hitting them, uh, Brunson and Quickly, I mean, why not run and play? Why not put the ball in in Grimes' hands, right? Top of the arc and spread Brunson IQ out and have Grimes try to beat his guy off the dribble, which he can. We've known he's actually one of the very best in the entire NBA. And, but also understanding that the whole point is unless you have a complete wide open look right to the hoop, if you have, any, if anyone at all tries to rotate over to you from the wings, find the open guy on the wings like the pucks do. So what I'm saying is we should have been executing the type of end game strategy that the bucks did against us that actually beat us. Right now we could be talking about a five game winning streak. We could be talking about the Knicks finishing the half season 23 and 18. Instead, they finished 22 and 19. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. Now, I get it. Randall, you know, didn't shoot well tonight. But he played 40 minutes. Played 40 minutes right there. Look at IQ. 43 minutes. Unbelievable. The bench. Not much from Fournier, one of four. He hit one big three. That was a big three-pointer that he hit, but the other three, nothing. Uh, Deuce, uh, one of three in 14 minutes. Isaiah Hartenstein, tremendous disappointment tonight. I think he, he went 0 for 6. I think three of those misses was on one ex one possession. <laughs> he kept re getting the rebound, kept doing trying to tip backs, nothing. 0 for 6. Finished with a goose egg. And Obi Toppin, his first game back. He came in, he hit one of one of two from the three-point line, one of three overall, uh, three points. Uh, he actually had a nice move. Uh, I liked that move. He didn't quite, was, wasn't able to connect on it. Uh, he only played eight minutes, but that's, uh, that's some bad minute management by the head coach of the New York Knicks. Here's the plus minus. No surprise here that the leader in plus minus is Emmanuel Quickly. It's a plus five. It was actually even greater. It was like a plus 13 or 14 at one point through that third quarter. Uh, Randall finished with a plus two. Jalen Brunson, 44 points tonight, finished with a minus two. And it shows. It happened. It's just the reality of, of, of the math. While he's on the court, the Knicks were outscored by two points. But look at dude, look at the whole bench. Uh, Isaiah, uh, Deuce, a minus 11. I mean, 48 actually was a plus one. That's kind of like a weird, shocking thing. But, you know, you're, you're only getting nine points from your bench players. It's really hard to win in the NBA if you're only getting nine points from your bench players. <sighs> Especially, look, they got they got uh, 35 points from their bench players. We got nine. Nine. Here, the Knicks were able to put up 100 shots. Uh, with that, I attribute to, uh, well, I guess a lot of off the offensive rebounds. We won that battle. We, we were plus six there. We had 18 and they had 12. Uh, overall, the rebounds were even. 
but they committed 14 turnovers. We committed seven, so that also added to our uh, extra, we had 11 extra shots. Uh, we won the points in the paint battle, 44 to 30. Uh, and we didn't commit that many fouls. We were once up by 17, but ended up losing this game. Oh, it hurts. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this loss hurts. This loss hurts! Ah! We need RJ back. We desperately need him back. Because um, the, the bench unit uh, just needs somebody on it to help drive them and make them po make some points right now we're overusing randall uh he plays with the bench a lot uh you know iq's minutes are way up we just desperately need rj back on this team i said a long time ago that i felt that the team actually when both rj and brunson were out that i felt that this team the way as they are currently constructed actually miss rj more than they miss brunson because iq is giving you the numbers that brunson gives you and he is you can see it you can see it tonight even Brunson tonight gave us the 44 that uh, RJ gave us against Chicago, right? So, but who's given us what IQ gives us when he's coming off the bench? Nobody stepped up and filled that role. So we need that. We need that desperately. The team is a little bit out of balance, but it cannot be mistaken. It cannot be uh, overlooked that overall the team has been playing very, very well. And tonight... If Randall has his typical shooting night that he has had for the past 20 games, we would probably do win this game tonight. But he, that's not really something I want to hang my head on, hat on because we were right there. We got a tremendous effort from Brunson, 40-something points tonight. Tremendous effort from IQ. We should have been able to win this game. Just weren't able to do it. Drew Holiday connected on three big buckets, two huge three-point shots that uh, Grimes, who was defending him, he bit on every single drive and was left defenseless when Drew did the step back for the three. It was He had planned it all along because Drew's, Drew knew that if he drove to the bucket, even if he made it, it wasn't going to be enough because we live in the world of the three-point play. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is George. Please follow me on Twitter <laughs> right there and subscribe if you haven't yet. Turn on the notification bell so you're alerted when I actually drop a video. Hit the thumbs up button and check out the pregame show. We had Lee Escobedo on there, Escobedo on there, and we went through, we gave the midseason uh, report. It was a great stream, so check that out. And I will see you around the next bar.